Yo, what's up guys? I'm here with a key video. We're going to do a key guide tour for Black Rook Hold. Um, this is to help people get their 20s and portals done for the Two, season. Um, this is a unholy DK gameplay. I'm playing with a few people from my servers. Uh, the, de the Demon Hunter and the Warlock are both from my server. So, server of Eladin. Um, I start the key off pretty rough here. I forgot to use my uh, my ghoul, summon ghoul, because I wasn't used to the uh, icon. For some reason, I thought the B res icon was the summon undead. I haven't played Unholy and Mythic Plus in like months. And then here I am looking for him, like, dude, where the fuck is it? Yeah, that was rough. I couldn't find it because I don't remember what the icon looked like or anything. But it, it was already on my bars, so... I don't, I don't like the new icon. I'm probably going to make a macro for the old one. Yeah, I was so confused, but the key gets better as time goes on. Um... But as you see, this Warlock will be doing a lot more damage to me in the first half just because of my uh, undead. And also, the mage did not last on the first pool. Uh, oh, little update, still haven't gotten a legendary this week. Pretty sad. Hopefully next week is the week. We have a couple of weeks left in the season. Yeah, then I found, at that point I found it where it was. The mage dies here. I think the mage dies a lot in this key. It's not. It's fine. Me and this uh, warlock do most of the work, anyways. This mob takes a very long time to kill for a tyrannical week, but most things I know usually pull this pack into the boss. Uh, this one didn't do it because he didn't trust us, and I understand why the mage died, and I didn't have any cooldowns. Yeah, sometimes I check if my pet's on passive because when my damage is low, it's like, is, is my shit on passive again? Hold up. And then file something you have to get used to. But I get better as the key goes on. I usually play Frost. I just wanted to do an unholy key for this video because I just made an unholy guide. So, have some cross. Whatever you call it, I don't know. But this boss is a pretty much a loot piano. You dodge a few things. Uh, the add phase is a little difficult, but we do some weird thing. Yeah, like I don't know what happened here. But sometimes you can save Ambom Limb for this phase, but I did that once and I end up wiping us. So it's probably like actually, I think it's like the worst time to use Ambom Limb. You can use your grips to grip those ghosts away from the boss because if they reach the boss, the boss gets buffed. And uh, after that cast he just did, you'll take more damage. Um, you can kind of AMS it. Be unscathed. So besides that, this boss is pretty much a done deal. We're just going to go ahead and skip to the next pack. Me and the Warlock have a little conversation about Holy DK. At the time, I was hating it, honestly. Because I had no clue what I'm doing. Um, this spider, you gotta watch out. Make sure not to get aggro on these spiders because they leave a really nasty dot on you that needs to get cleansed. If it doesn't get cleansed, it pretty much one-shots you. It one-shots the tank. 
Uh, not in this video, but usually it will kill the tank if it doesn't get dispelled. Um, I do pretty bad on this part. Uh, you gotta make sure to always interrupt the arcane blitz and uh, grip the archer when she does her little volley thing. Yeah, this pack is pretty much all about controlling the mobs. So, uh, uh, interrupting arcane blast and grip the archer and her little volley thing when she jumps, you just grip her back like I do here. Crisis averted. I don't know why the mage keeps freezing her because when the mage freezes the mob, I can't grip him. Almost lose the file stacks there. And we pull this pack. Watch out for the frontal. The champion casts the frontal, so never stand in front of him. You can grip this uh, panth panther back. It usually just leaps away, anyways. Like that, so. Now I'll have a, a pretty nasty dot. You just kind of have to stand away, not stack. Here, make sure you interrupt the Arcanist with their Arcane Blast. And grip the Archer when she jumps away. And then it's pretty much just pack this whole room in general. It's just about controlling the mobs. Like you see here, I end up standing in the uh, arc, uh, Archer's shit. That's a weird spot we tanked it here. I could have used the um I don't even remember what you call that ability. Fleeting snow. A little frontal ability to daze all those guys so they could stop casting their shit. But the pack dies really fast anyways, so who cares? I used army there. Because it should be up by the next boss, by the middle of the next boss. This pack's a little annoying because it has two archers, so just make sure they grip the archers when they jump. Um, tank already. I mean, the tank weren't communicating, but I know the warlock and the tank were in a call with each other. Probably why the Warlock did more damage. He probably pulled around his cooldowns, but I mean he's probably just a better player. Shit almost made me want to go play a Warlock, but I didn't realize I hate the demonology. Boss is pretty simple. Uh, Vengeful Shear is a tank mechanic. She throws a glaive and then uh, she, she um, does this little... Uh, dash thing you can kind of just AMS it you can't really see it because my particle effects were disabled because I was doing small drawn before this I forgot to re-enable them but she leaves behind like this little puddle and then she summons guards here on um, watch out for this Arcanus you gotta make sure to interrupt him One goes off right there. Another one goes off. But in high keys, that shit really hurts. And you can kind of just ignore the Vanguard. He'll just die by himself. He kind of doesn't really do anything besides auto attack anyways. I got about a minute and 30 on my army. Yeah, my damage is pretty low for this boss. I think the mage ends up dying again on this boss, but I don't remember how. But if you stand on the side of the boss like that, you won't get hit by the glaive. Yeah, 
He can't, yeah, the tank, yeah, he does die. He's still in the pool, I think. But as you can see, since I have the particle effects disabled, I can't see the, uh... And I end up stand, uh, standing in the puddle on purpose for the, uh, AMS. When you use AMS and you take magic damage, you gain runic power. So that's kind of like the whole idea. It's like an offensive way to use it. Another vengeful retreat. So, kind of pull this half the side of the room. Yeah, armor should be up for this next pack, though. Yeah, but on top, on top, uh, for our um, bolstering works. This pull that this tank is about to do is pretty uh, insane. You kind of have to watch out with your aggro here. These mobs will turn on you. Yeah, I don't really have any cooldowns. So I just end up using a uh, am bomb limb with army. So army is really... One thing I noticed about army in Mythic Plus is that it really isn't nearly as good as it is in single target. And I don't know how the mage die here again. If I had cooldowns, <clears throat> that pack would have been a lot better, but I can't communi that, communicate that to the tank, so it is what it is. Yeah, this wall kind of just gives up halfway in. Uh, I think I use army here, trinket, holy assault. I should have reapplied my uh, diseases here. Yeah, I lost a lot of damage out because of that. But this was like my first key after not playing in Holy for like a month. I've been mostly playing uh, Frost. I've been chasing 1 million damage crits like crazy. I should make a series about that. Ch chasing 1 million crit obliterate. I did it on Smolderon during his intermission, but I'm not sure if you'd count that because of the huge damage buff. Use the file here. Yeah, but hopefully I get the legendary next week. So I'll my damage will probably go up by like 20%, 10%. Gotta make sure to interrupt Fell Frenzy, but it's kind of a little bit awkward and um, in a pug if you don't have your hip scheduled. So someone will be standing in front of Hateful Gaze here and then a knockback. I could have death advanced it, but I was a little too late. You could also AMS it. To get sure runic power. Actually, no, you can't AMS it. I think it's physical damage. So I soak this one because tank soaked the last one. You could only tank one. If you tank any more, you'll die. Okay, I'm ready to send this shit. Damage will start climbing here. I dad defense that one like a pro. I need to reapply my bleeds here. Or my dot. Um, then you want to drop these lines off to the side. I didn't notice I had it here. But yeah, you just kind of want to go into the furthest corner possible. Uh, I don't want to stand in front of this. The range can also tank one. And you kind of just want to kill the boss before... Uh... See, and I'll run over here. 
drop my line. Now he's going to charge us. Someone. I can stand in front of this, but... Someone else already had that covered. The tank, I think, can soak too. Depending on his defensives. I'm not going to drop this line. I'm just going to kill the boss. And then the next part of this uh, dungeon is my favorite part. If pulled correctly. I think uh, for some reason the tank kind of holds off on pulling big this one. epidemic here really bad tank is moving all the way up there yeah so pretty much this is you just kind of have to dance and sometimes play at range I'm getting auto attacked here so I use the uh, IBF aggro on a mob somehow well yeah you pretty much just want to die these guys you can see see them to prevent them from doing it but as a dk all you really have is blinding sleet and then that's the only way you can see see those mobs now the way the raven quest fight is pretty simple the first part's a little bit annoying uh, there's a npc that's casting shadow bolt on everyone as you can see in the right side of my screen um, it does a shit ton of damage you can dodge this but I I'm an awful player so it is what it is yep, and then he got shadow ball on me if the key was like two keys higher I would have died there it's kind of hard to tell if you're gonna get hit by shadow bolt because um, it's not a targeted NPC make sure not to stand in front of that Tank kites the boss away from the glaives. And then now we're going to go into phase two. Usually you would just use your big cooldowns now with Lust, but for some reason the Lust, they waited after the first intermission. So I guess it makes sense, but the boss ends up dying really fast after the intermission, so I didn't really even get to do all my damage. Um, you will get targeted with this uh, little stinging swarm. You can attack it and kill it yourself. Um, you'll need help killing it because it has a shit ton of health. Um, you'd want to use your cooldowns for the Shadow Ball Volley. And this is like a little intermission. Just dodge his line. It's a really easy fight. And he also leaves little green puddles. If you stand on that, I think you go to sleep. And obviously you don't want to do that then because then you'll get hit by the beams. Okay, and then you want to roll army. Everything you got. The file, all of it. Gotta watch out for that green puddle. Um, this part of the phase, Shadow Ball Volley really doesn't do any damage. Yeah, it dies too quick for me to get all my damage out, sadly. And I guess some some shitty loot, it is what it is. I could have got the uh, trinket. The trinket from here is Biss for you. Not that one, but a burst trinket. Um, besides that, this dungeon is probably the easiest one to do, the easiest pro to get. Um, you kind of just kill shit and... Next, we plus three this. Um, I got smurfed on by the Warlock, but as I said before, I didn't have my pet. Um, so shoutouts to the Warlock and the tank for helping me out with this key. Uh, plus 320. And yeah, that's it guys, peace.